A reading from John. <clears throat> In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought life to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never be extinguished. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's one and only son. The word of the Lord. Today's cantata is a gospel. It is our story of life and our story of salvation. Because we know that things are happening, things are happening here, we feel it. Mary is pregnant and a baby is coming and coming right soon, and a big change is coming. It is the story of our lives, too, the story that we may have shared from this season of Advent. We all know this story, a man and a woman marry and start a life together. They are young and maybe immature and understandably are fairly thinking of their life as husband and wife and not possibly as mother and father. Or they may be older like Elizabeth and Zachariah or Abraham and Sarah who may have given up on having children. See, don't give up. It certainly might have been that way for Mary, a young girl, barely into her teens, living a very sheltered life, betrothed to Joseph, an older man who may have had a family and a wife before Mary. But nevertheless, they were a couple who may have had a plan for their life, a little home in Nazareth with a workshop for Joseph. But something is about to change. And then you feel that kick. You feel that kick, and you know for sure <clears throat> Before that, the baby is still moving, but you just think it's gas. <laughs> it's actually the baby quickening in your stomach, but a little later comes that first kick. And then some exclamation from your wife like, what in the world? I actually wanted, when I was writing this sermon, to ask everyone I could what it was like when you felt that first kick that leap in your belly that indicates that life is actually happening inside of you, growing, changing, becoming. It is a part of you, and it is a part of you that you share with someone else, maybe a husband, and in Mary's case, with God. And maybe you are starting to begin to feel that baby is going to change lives. My brothers and sisters, a baby changes everything. Now, it may be that you can actually see a foot stretching out of your belly, but you realize that there is a baby inside you. It hits you then. Something is really happening. Someone is growing. 
You call your husband. Come quick, the baby's moving. Look, here's a foot. And my brothers and sisters, that first kick might also be a proxy from an adoption agency or a surrogate parent. When you are called and you hear, we have a baby for you. That's the kick. So whether it be a kick or that call, I hope that if you have time later, you'll share with me your story. I have a feeling that the stories will be similar because a baby changes everything. And then that baby comes along and really does change everything. My brothers and sisters, nothing makes you grow up quicker. Nothing changes your priorities more. You, your sleep schedule changes. Your social life pauses indefinitely. Your love life must alter. Your house is not as quiet. It also smells different. Your money vanishes. You must humble yourself to degrading tasks. A baby changes everything. So you think you're smart, <clears throat> you make changes as necessary, and indeed the baby does need changing every time you turn around. You think that you are changing them, but really they are changing you. You want to mold and shape this new life but at least, at first, only you are being transformed. You know, that baby changes everything. Your wife's pride was in her hair, which she could spend hours shaping. Now it's cut short, pulled back, and washed about as often as in pioneer days. She always wanted more curves. Now she's got them. A baby changes a lot. The husband used to watch football in his easy chair. Now he's a gopher, running plays called by his new life coach from the sidelines. And he can't afford to drop the ball because it's his child which he cradles in a football hold, trying to, take, to make the colic stop. Yeah, a baby changes everything. Next, the baby starts pulling up and cruising around. So the knickknacks must be moved higher or put away. We tried so hard to get them to walk and talk, and suddenly we're telling them, sit down and be quiet just for a minute. <laughs> a baby changes everything. And if you have never raised a child, <clears throat> if you haven't had the pleasure of dirty diapers and feedings every three hours, <clears throat> and being up all hours and being broke half the time, if you haven't had that pleasure, your friends' babies will change your life too. Your friends have new priorities. Your Friday night get-togethers might be gone and your Saturday golf foursome might be a threesome or a twosome. And you might not be called to babysit without going through a vetting process from the CIA handbook. A baby changes everything, yes, a baby changes everything. It is our life's story, and it was Mary and Joseph's story. A baby changes everything, but in this case, God's case, it is the story of our salvation. Let me tell you how I think it's the story of our salvation. Up to now, the story of salvation was the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark, the chest, where the Ten Commandments were stored, the law that if followed, we thought would bring us salvation. But a baby changes that. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the one who visited Elizabeth, Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant, and a baby changes everything. Yes, a baby changes things. And I'm constantly finding that God uses the least likely person to be the agent of change, to carry that baby who will change everything. The Ten Commandments is now replaced by his grace, his grace that sets us free from sin. Without this child, we are captive to sin, but he will free us by his death and suffering. A baby changes everything. So my brothers and sisters, 
I think I know your stories. Your stories of the first kick, they are in many ways like Elizabeth and Mary's story. Your story may be like Mary and Joseph's story, but the one thing that will be common in all our stories is that a baby, especially this baby, changes everything. He changed water into wine at Cana. He changed a few loaves and fish to feed a multitude. He changed me and brought me to your church. He changed some of you because you never thought you'd be here today. Make way for him. He's almost here, and he will change it all and make all things new. A baby changes everything because God loves you, and so do I. Amen.